Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming today to hear about the experience with the Social Enterprise Development and Investment Funds. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rosemary Addis, and I'm currently the Social Innovation Strategist at the Federal Department of Employment. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I'm joined on the panel today by Belinda Drew, CEO of Foresters, Emily Martin from Social Ventures Australia, and David Rickards from Social Enterprise Finance Australia. Those three organisations are the fund managers for the three social enterprise development and investment funds or CEDAF funds. And I will refer to it as CEDAF just for convenience because it's too long otherwise. What I want to talk about in framing the panel discussion this afternoon is a little bit about the genesis and intention of the CEDAF initiative. A bit about perspective that we might have on new funds in a new market and some of the key themes from the learning so far. And then hand over to each of the fund managers to talk a little bit about their funds because they're all quite different. And about the experience that they're having in the market and then we'll open it up for hopefully a really rich discussion about that and what it means for the social impact marketplace. The CEDAF initiative was an initiative of the previous federal government, really in response to some calls from the market that there were signals of social enterprise starting to develop in line with global trends and also that the time was right in Australia for some funds and funding um, to kick off a new way of financing social enterprise. Of course, there was the issue of who's going to go first and through a range of circumstances, $20 million of government grant funding was identified and was offered to seed fund at least two new investment funds in the market. Now some of this was back to the future if you think in terms of um, the history in Australia of cooperatives and mutuals and some of the ways that things used to be financed at community level. But for where we were in the market in 2010, it was seen as new and really trying to tap into the global trends and the very uh, early but building conversation about social finance or impact investment. The idea was to try to combine public and private capital to get a different result, a result that would offer more appropriate finance to social enterprises in Australia and would work with the sector to better engage with the full spectrum of funding and financing options and to help build the market in Australia. There was a recognition from a policy perspective that it can be difficult for social enterprise to access appropriate finance or finance on appropriate terms and that new funds and new options might be needed. There was also a recognition that that lack of access to capital affects not only the prospects for scale and effectiveness of existing social enterprises, but also creates barriers for new entrepreneurs wanting to enter the market. And this story's got really a lot in common with economic innovation and with other aspects of small and medium enterprise, but obviously particular dimensions when we're looking at a market for social investment or for purpose organisations. There's not time today to go into the entire process in relation to the design and development of the approach that we took to the CEDAF initiative, but there are materials that uh, will, uh, are available on the website or will shortly be available again on the new Department of Employment website about the learning from that process, which are intended to help others look at how they might do things. Suffice it to say that we did look at the international best practice, at the context here in Australia, and tried to design something 
that would obviously deliver value for money of the public investment that was being made, but that would also act as a stimulus to the market here in Australia and would allow that market to operate to bring forward proposals that were commercially viable and would actually um, make a contribution to two key things. More money at the right time on appropriate terms for social enterprise and developing and testing the market for impact investment or social investment here in Australia. And so when we went to market after looking at that international evidence and after testing and consulting with the market here, we set those two key objectives, but then we said to people who might apply, you tell us, you tell us what your vision for your fund is, you tell us how you're gonna do it, tell us how you're gonna engage the investors, tell us how you're gonna develop a pipeline of social enterprise and the kind of financial products that you're going to offer. And importantly, tell us who's going to execute and how you're going to execute so we can see demonstrable capacity to actually do what it is that you're saying is encompassed in this strategy and vision. Again, this has much in common with a lot of the approaches taken in, uh, in venture capital. And we really positioned the government money, even though it was a grant, to be more like a cornerstone investment. We closed two funds in July 2011 and the third fund in April of 2012. And then they had a set up period. And so we're talking about now uh, two years down the track from the first funds, which were Foresters and, and CIFA, opening their doors to the market. So as I said earlier, it's important we have perspective on this, new funds in a new market, new business models in their own right, and their experience so far, I would say again, has much in common with other new funds in new markets. We can look at social enterprise funds around the world and see a lot in common with both the successes and the challenges that these funds have faced. We can look at small and medium enterprise experience and see a lot in common. And we can look at some of the story of early markets for venture capital and other new innovations in finance and see parallels there as well. In terms of that perspective, what are the things we've learned so far? I think with the initiative we were able to show that if you've got some capital that's willing to absorb some risk or to go first on favourable terms, that you can bring other mainstream capital to the table. My personal view is that doesn't have to be government funding, that it could come from a range of sources, and there are models that you can look at internationally, including in one case in Canada, where a bank's taken their foundation funds as the lost capital and then used balance sheet funding for the fund. So um, the fact that you can attract capital by changing the risk reward for other investors in the early stage of a market's important. We also showed that relatively modest investment um, can result in new funds, can actually be enough to shift people from thinking and talking about things to acting, and can bring together new alliances and new collaborations. I think we've also seen that it's hard work, and nobody expected it would be otherwise. But the strategy is always different from the execution, and I'll let my colleagues talk about what their experience has been going out into the market, because that's such a really important dimension. The intention's one thing, the execution and the doing, and the recalibrating based on what you're finding in the market is really important. We've also found that the assessments that it would be, uh, that there would be a job to do in developing the pipeline of investable social enterprises were well, right. There is a job to do in developing that pipeline of investable social enterprises. I'll let again my colleagues talk about how some of their perceptions of that have changed through the doing. And certainly we've seen, similar to other jurisdictions, that you often get a rush of people with great and good ideas that aren't yet developed enough to be investable. There's a lot of business development that's often needed. And there's also organisations, particularly in the Australian landscape, where there's not an accepted meaning for social 
enterprise where, that may not identify with that term, that might not think the opportunity of finance applies to them, or where taking on finance as opposed to other forms of funding might be a shift indeed. So, from our perspective, there's been a lot of work to get to this point and a lot of successes and milestones along the way, including in getting the funds to market with private leverage on public capital and offering a new type of finance to social enterprise. There's still a lot of hard work ahead and for an innovation story for new funds in a new market, it's still very early days. That said, there's a lot that we can learn from the practical experience and I'm going to uh, invite each of the fund managers to talk about their experience, about some of the great work they're doing in financing social enterprises and about what they uh, have learned and the live issues that we can talk about today in terms of developing the, uh, the field and the market ahead. So I'll call on Belinda first. Um, thanks, Rosemary. We had a little, well, I had a little, led a little conversation to begin with that we might sit at the panel and talk to you rather than each of us stand up here, but we're being recorded, so, um, so we'll stand here and talk to you as we go. I'll introduce um, Emily in turn. Um, I think, um, you know, reflecting on what Rosemary's just said, we were, you know, we were asked to speak to you this afternoon about some of the challenges inherent in the task we took up some two years ago. Um, and I think it's fair enough to say that, you know, in any innovation there's a degree of controversy and naivety. Um, and I want to touch on a couple of those things in the couple of minutes I have to speak to you. Um, naivety because you really can't know uh, what it is that you set out to do in practice. Really, we started with an idea, um, some knowledge about the social enterprise market, but really a set of ideas. Can we take um, this kind of capital and make it useful in um, the context of social enterprise development? And I think um, the answer to that broadly is yes. Um, but as I said, with innovation comes controversy as well. So I want to touch on three things that I think uh, are worthy of debate as we continue in our journey. Um, one of them relates to um, uh, social enterprise as, a, as an emerging market. Um, I don't think we can say any longer that social enterprise is a new idea in Australia. An event like this shows us that it's absolutely not. But the market's still emerging and taking shape and forming and at this point is um, relatively fragmented. So as you try to deliver capital into that market, you've got to deal with that fragmentation. So um, building um, deal flow or pipeline, as Rosemary referred to in that context, is really quite challenging. You've got to call out the enterprises, the deals, the projects um, that are ultimately investable. And as you do that, you call out a whole stack of stuff that is um, really great in terms of its idea and social focus, but not investable. And out of that arises controversy, because um, uh, as we go through the process of talking to an enterprise about um, providing finance, you raise expectations. Um, so there's um, I think the other um, lesson that we're learning is being able to calibrate the risk that we need to take to the needs that are in the market and we don't always get that right. So our journey across the two years has taught us an enormous amount about the um, kind of risk you need to be prepared to take if you're actually going to move the capital into the market. We started in one place and certainly our appetite for risk has changed and developed over that time. Um, I guess the second area I wanted to focus around was um, in relation to time, that time proves up a market. For our key investor in our large um, social enterprise fund, Christian Super, um, uh, being patient as an investor and waiting for time to elapse so that you can actually prove up that market is critically important. If we had an investor hungry for the capital to be pushed out there, we A, might make poor decisions, but we would have found ourselves um, uh, in failure, really. Um, and connected to that over time, this idea that um, as investors entered the market, they perceived a particular risk, but over time, that market proves itself up and the risk 
perception diminishes and then therefore other investors um, see that next generation of investment in a different way. And my final um, point was really around um, the idea of depth and diversity. Um, and this goes to, I think, for organisations like ours over the long term, the issue of sustainability. How do we deliver these funds in a sustainable way? Um, uh, I don't think I could have got through this little presentation without raising the S word. Um, but more importantly, actually how we generate um, sustainable um, impact that actually has some breadth and depth to it. So I would also say that currently, although I could stand here and tell you that we've made some absolutely lovely investments through our fund, um, the day that um, we'll be as an organisation really excited is when we can say we don't have just a range of nice investments but actually now a portfolio with broad range and depth delivering the kind of impact that makes the real changes that we're all interested in. Thank you. Thanks, Belinda. And I'll now invite Emily Martin to come up and talk about uh, SVA's Social Impact Fund. Hi, I'm just going to start briefly by giving a bit of background about the fund, and then I'm going to talk about some of the challenges I see both in raising investment capital and also in deploying that investment capital. So as Rosemary mentioned, the SVA fund was the last fund to be set up. So we've been around for about 15 months now. We got $4 million from the federal government, and then we raised close to 5 million from private investors. So at the moment, we have 9 million to invest in social enterprises. Our private investors are mainly individual high net worths. Uh, they've invested via their private ancillary funds or family trusts. And then in, in terms of deploying that capital, so far we have approved investments of uh, close to 2 million. And the purpose of the fund was to provide both debt and equity investments to social enterprises, and particularly to enterprises that were addressing disadvantage in Australia. I'll give you some just brief examples of the investments we've made so you have an idea of what I mean. Uh, one of our loan investments was to an organisation in Queensland that was a not-for-profit. They had won a contract with the, the regional council. They'd won a social procurement contract. But to fulfil that contract, they needed to go out and hire the staff and train the staff and put a whole lot of procedures in place. But as a newly established social enterprise, they didn't have any assets, they didn't have any cash, and also they didn't have the time to go through a, a lengthy bank due diligence process. So we provided a loan to that particular enterprise. As I mentioned, we also do equity financing. And I'll give you an example of the one equity investment we've done. That was in a for-profit social enterprise that's based out of Melbourne. They have a social mission of providing jobs to disadvantaged job seekers, and they also have an environmental mission of recycling TVs and computers, and therefore diverting waste from landfill. They were looking for capital to expand their operations, and they were looking for a million of equity capital, which in the venture capital world is actually a very small amount, and also the traditional venture capitalists might not be very interested in someone that has a social mission, because that can have the potential to impact profitability. But for the fund, it was ideal, and so we've invested in that particular organisation, and that's allowed them to go on and hire another 30 disadvantaged job seekers. So that's the kind of stuff we've done so far. And in terms of the challenges, firstly, the challenges from raising the capital. In terms of people investing in social enterprise, they really want to see a track record, but this is a new industry and it's hard for us to say what the, uh, the risk is of investing in social enterprise. I mean, is it the same as investing in other small businesses or maybe it's riskier because you have a social aspect there as well? And also without the fund set up to do this, we can't point to any kind of track record. So that's been tricky in terms of raising financing. And another issue, um, 
has been more about the fact that it's hard to build the pipeline. So at the moment, we've approved investments of two million, but which means we still have seven million sitting in cash. So some investors are saying, well, once you deploy it, I'll give you more, but if you haven't invested all of that so far, then I'm not going to invest anymore. And then from the challenge of deploying that capital and finding investment opportunities, so far the fund has had inquiries from over 100 different social enterprises, but only a third of them were investment ready. And the two thirds that weren't investment ready, the, the primary issues that I've seen are a lack of business planning and strategy. There's a number of people that might be at the very conceptual stage, so they approach the fund, but they're not sure what financing they need, they're not sure how they want it structured, they're not sure where their revenue is coming from, they don't know what their expenses are. And as an investor, that's all stuff I need to know so I can make it an investment decision. And one of the other issues which we found is that there seems to be um, a culture of, of grants. So we've even had some for-profit social enterprises approach us looking for grant funding. Um, so of those two-thirds that weren't investment ready, it's about 80% of them that were more interested in the grant funding side of things rather than the financing. Um, so they're the, the primary issues which we've had to date. And in terms of the people that were investment ready, um, the only other issue we've seen there is that, um, ironically, some are too investment ready. So they're, they're looking for large amounts of money or they're ready for bank financing. So one of the difficulties we have with the fund is that we're trying to help businesses move away from grant funding, but fill the gap between what they can get from the existing market. So if social enterprises can access bank financing or they can access traditional venture capital, then we're not trying to fill that, that particular gap. We're trying to fill the gap between the grants and traditional financing. So that's an overview from me. Should I introduce David now from CIFA? Thanks, Emily. Um, and thank you, Rosemary. Yes, yeah, so I represent CIFA, Social Enterprise Finance Australia, and um, we were formed uh, a couple of years ago. So we're actually a startup as well. And the title of the um, session, I think, is What Has CDF Taught Us? So um, Rosemary and her CDF team has um, certainly taught uh, myself and CIFA a fair bit because we had no knowledge when we started virtually. Um, so it was a fair, one of the key things we have learnt. Um, first of all is that there is a great load of businesses out there in Australia. There's no doubt that um, I've been uh, very encouraged by all the businesses that have come to us, which are almost 400 now, inquiries. And uh, it's very exciting to see all those businesses. Um, I think Emily and Belinda has hi have highlighted some of the um, challenges in some of those businesses coming. We've seen similar ratios in readiness, etc. so I won't go through that. We have now committed um, around about 10 loans out there, about $7 million, and that's across um, New South Wales, Tasmania, and um, Northern Queensland in particular. So what, what has also been very noticeable out of that, so it's a huge number of inquiries with very few, um, you know, very few number of loans at the other side over now, which is over two, almost two years, a bit more than two years. So that's highlighting a very long pipeline, very long pipeline between inquiry and disbursement. Um, so that's something I've been taught that um, compared to our business plan and our recalibrating that's going on, as um, Rosemary mentioned, is that the time lags are much bigger than we expected. Um, we also have had too narrow a business model when we started, and I think Emily's highlighted that again. We're, we're, if you like, we're competing with the banks on the top side, so we don't want to compete against the banks. This is money which is to be creating new businesses and added money. Um, and then there's a whole group of businesses which are not investment ready. So it's actually a very tight band between what the banks will do and what's investment ready. And we've had to broaden, if you like, more sideways rather than more deep to on debt. And um, certainly a more VC type of business, venture capital type areas we've got to um, do. And um, one project, particularly in Northern Queensland, we effectively have to get organise the equity and organise the debt. And I think some of the people are in the room who we've, we've worked with to get debt and equity all together in the one venture. So we've virtually had to go out and get it all, help, help assist set it up. So we've acted as a 
organiser. And um, coming with a very narrow, obviously we were really narrow on the debt side, we had to go out and grow that network of finding people who co-invest, etc. So that's been a learning process. Um, the other side's on the impact measurement. Um, the lesson there is, I don't think we actually had to learn this lesson, was that, you know, we were told pretty quickly this is what was, um, that it has to be kept very, very simple because it's quite a burden on these organisations. Most of them who are coming to us are startups. So when you start talking to them about, well, how are you going to measure impact, that's yet another. But they virtually, often, a couple of them have turned away from us when we started talking and asking about how you're going to measure impact. It's quite a challenge and quite frightening to a lot of businesses out there to be asked those questions and to put in some sort of process. And we're even though we're trying to convince them that it's almost a management, you know, it's, it will help you and assist your management, that is taken with a grain of salt. So basically just two or three measurements is what we're looking for. And then our own experience and our own working with them, we have to then put together the impact from that side of things more. Um, and the other area is, is scale. There's no doubt that we can't, uh, we are not sustainable as uh, Belinda, this obviously comes to Belinda's point very much, we are just not sustainable even the size we are. So the amount of capacity building that's required um, and the amount of breadth we need in the marketplace, the amount of networking we need to do, uh, believe it or not, even at this size, we're not, we just can't make money out of that. So we have to double or almost triple the size of this fund to have enough excess being made that we can then reinvest back into the capacity building, etc. So um, that gives you an idea of the amount of money that's needed and needs to be transferred from one area back to the other areas to develop these pipelines. Um, so we are years away from being sustainable and that again comes to Belinda's point about patient equity, um, you know, thank God. And otherwise, um, we would be you know, um, having to run the uh, surrender flag up. Um, the other thing we've learned is, and I've, you know, again, um, this sector, um, I'm not, you know, my history is not from working in this sector for long term. So um, I've had to learn working with the government as a grantee, grantor, sorry. And, um, and that's been a great experience. DEWA has definitely gone out of their way to help us across Australia. And so that's been a partnership we didn't anticipate to be as strong in the business plan either. And has basically introduced quite a f bit of a business and has introduced other governments, etc. Um, it shows the pluses and the minuses, unfortunately. There is an awful lot where government doesn't work together, different parts of government. But there is some parts of government that work very well together. So again, that's, you know, again, a learning experience for me in particular in, in the business. But overall, it's been a uh, journey which I'm glad we've come on and um, what we're looking forward to now is some of the um, questions and hopefully some of the answers from us. But thank you very much. And thank you, Rosemary.